<laughs> I, I kind of um, feel like the moon base or just <laughs> going to the moon for real this time would be a big step in the right direction. You still have the moon uh, planned? What's the status of that? Is, is that still on the agenda? Yeah, I, I, think it, I, think having, I think we want to try to reach new heights as a civilization. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's fine to go to the moon, but, but we, we should go to the moon in order to establish a lunar base, like a, re, a lunar research base. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are parts of the moon that are perhaps older than parts of, of Earth. Um, and we, we, we might understand more about the nature of the universe if we had a science base on the moon. Yeah. Um, that would be very cool. And then we, we obviously want to go beyond the moon uh, to Mars and uh, build a self-sustaining city on Mars. The, I, I do think that, uh, that, that there is a fork in the road of human destiny where um, if we can establish a self-sustaining city on Mars, uh, the, with the, the, the key test being if the resupply ships from Earth stop coming for any reason, does Mars continue to, to prosper or does it die out? At the point at which Mars is able to uh, prosper and grow on its own, the probable lifespan of consciousness is dramatically greater because we are no longer dependent on everything going right on Earth. You know, there's, there's always some possibility of self-annihilation on Earth with the World War III some, or, or a super virus or, um, or, or a meteor like extinct, but, you know, that destroyed the dinosaurs. We know from the fossil record that there have been many mass, mass extinction events. So uh, the question that, that I sort of am always wondering about is, will, civilization can, will the civilizational arc continue to ascend such that we can make Mars self-sustaining before the civil, civilizational arc descends? Mm. Um, because the, the, the window of opportunity to make life multiplanetary exists now for the first time in the four and a half billion year history of Earth. Yeah. Elon, and, let's assume that we get there and you're there. Um, you know, you'd be the elder statesman. You'd have the moral authority of Mars. How do you run Mars? <laughs> I, but I, I, there's this point that I, I think I, I want to just emphasize again that that's, it's more important than the form of governance on Mars or who's there in the early days. What really matters is that Mars um, is self-sustaining, that we are truly a multi-planet species and such, such that we've achieved planetary redundancy. So that, that if, if something, to, and, I, and I obviously we should, we should do everything possible to make sure life on Earth is great, but there's always some risk that of an annihilation event on Earth. Yeah. Um, like I said, self-annihilation or some natural disaster. Um, and, uh, and so the, the probable lifespan of consciousness increases dramatically as soon as, uh, as soon as we are multi-planet species, with the key test being, can Mars survive if the resupply ships stop coming? So, it's, it's, so getting, like the first missions to Mars are not that important. The, what matters is, can you get sufficient tonnage, tonnage to Mars such that Mars can uh, prosper on its own? Um, and that means it has to have all of the ingredients of civilization. It, it, it's not just that you'd need to build, for example, a chip factory on Mars or chip fab on Mars, but you you need the ability, ability to build too. chip fabs. Do you 